The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On that day, as the evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat just as he was, and other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus, Jesus was in the stern, sleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you so terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. A couple years ago, there was a new story about a woman who had been shopping at a mall for a considerable amount of time and when she had finished shopping she returned to her car. When she got to her car she was shot. There were four men inside the car. She dropped her shopping bags, drew a handgun and screamed, I have a gun and I know how to use it. Get out of the car. Those men did not wait for a second invitation. They got out and ran like crazy. The woman, somewhat shaken, loaded her shopping bags and then got into the car. But no matter how she tried, she could not get her key into the ignition. <laughs> then it dawned on her. Her car was parked five spaces away. So she loaded her grocery bags into her own car and then drove to the police station to turn herself in. The desk sergeant to whom she told the story nearly fell off his chair laughing. He pointed to the other end of the counter where four men were reporting a carjacking by an old woman with thick glasses and curly white hair, less than five feet tall and carrying a large handgun. No charges were filed. Now who was more frightened, those four guys? Or that dear woman. Well, if you got a long barrel 38, I think it was the four guys. And that brings us to our gospel today. We have a passage that appears in Matthew chapter 8 and Luke chapter 8. We have here the section from Mark chapter 4. And while the storyline is similar, there are a couple different details. For instance, Mark opens up this miracle story actually by giving us a few verses ahead of it, a section on Jesus' teaching, beginning in chapter 4, verse 1. He's at the side of Lake Gennesaret. A huge crowd comes in upon him. He can hardly breathe. And so he gets into a boat moored right next to the shore. And they push away a few feet. And so he's in a standing lecturing position while the people are all over there. And then all of a sudden, perhaps because he's had enough of the crowds, he very abruptly tells his disciples, Let's get out of here. The Greek verb, aphemi, means leave them behind. Let's move on. And so they're out in the boat. And at some point in time towards the evening, we're told that a sudden squall comes up. Now, we call these storms today microburst, but back then they were referred to as squalls. They were common in the Middle East today as they were back then. Sudden storm that comes up with a lot of wind, a lot of rain, and as quick as it comes up and does its damage, as quickly it will die down. Now, what's interesting, and Mark notes this, in the book of Psalms, 69 verse 2, it is written that evil forces at times control these powers of nature. So they're thinking that evil is behind this whole thing. Where is Jesus? Asleep in the stern of the ship on a cushion. He's comfortable and cozy for goodness sake. Now you may say to yourself, well how in the world can that happen? And that's a good question. Because believe it or not, 
archaeological studies for years had revealed that there was actually a standard size for a fishing boat back then. It would have been 26 and a half feet long by 7 and a half feet wide and 4 and a half feet deep. It was not the Queen Elizabeth II, no big luxury ocean liner. So you can only imagine with that kind of wind and rain going up against this boat, everything in it had to have been rattling and rowing, except Jesus, of course. But there's something else that Mark's trying to say to us. Do you remember what happened in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 2 after God creates the world and everything in it? Do you remember what God does? He sleeps. He sleeps. You get my point. We're getting a picture here of who Jesus is. But even more so, if you go to the book of Proverbs, the book of Psalms, the book of Sirach, it was a generally accepted understanding that anybody who could sleep through troubled times had incredible trust in God and a clear conscience. And we know that Jesus had both. Not with the disciples, though. They are terrified, and rightfully so. And so they go wake poor Jesus up. Jesus can't even get a good night's sleep. And they look at Jesus and they say, you know, don't you care that we're going to die here in a few minutes? Jesus simply stands up, says to the, to the wind and the waves, peace, be quiet. It all dies down. But then he looks at the disciples and says, why do you not yet have faith? Why? The disciples missed a very important series of scriptures found in the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 51, found in the book of Job chapter 26, and in the book of Psalms, Psalm 89, 93, and especially 106, where it is written, only God can control the winds and the waves. They might be put forth by the power of evil, but God can take care of them. Well, the disciples were told are struck with awe. And they wonder, who in the world is this that these winds and waves obey him? Get this, they are wowed by Jesus' miracle, but they have no clue that Jesus was behind it all. They lack faith. What's the problem with these disciples? They forget. They forget. If you look at the, at the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark, right at the beginning in chapter 1, as soon as John the Baptist baptized Jesus, Jesus starts working his miracles. The first miracle, he encounters a man who is possessed by a demon. No big deal for Jesus. He expels the demon. Then he goes to Simon Peter's mother-in-law's home. She's lying on a cot in the middle of the house dying from a feck infection that has her a huge fever. He heals her. She picks up her cot and starts waiting on them. Then he heals a man who is a leper and then many other people possessed by demons. You go to chapter 2 of that story. Jesus is in Capernaum. He hears a man who has been paralyzed, lying on the ground for years. Then you go to chapter 3. Jesus heals a man in the synagogue who has a withered hand and can't work to take care of his family and to provide food. Jesus straightens his hand up so the man can work again. And then you get to this miracle and they still don't understand who he is and it doesn't stop here. Go to chapter 6. Jesus has been teaching all day once again. 5,000 people are around. What happens? The end of the day comes. Jesus looks at the disciples and says, let's give these people something to eat. They look at him very sarcastically and very snottily. They say to him, where are we going to get enough money to feed all these people? Jesus sees a boy with a couple loaves and fish, and you know what happens. And they're scratching their heads saying, who's this? Who's this? Then they will be out at sea, the disciples, one night, when another storm happens. Where's Jesus? Walking on the water. They look at him. They think they see a ghost. They're scared to death. And then the very next chapter, he feeds 4,000 people with a couple loaves and fishes. My point is this. They have lapses in memory that cause them to lose their faith over and over again. That's a real problem for these disciples. 
And let's face it, they were right there physically with Jesus. They saw what he did, but they forget over and over again. A powerful point for each and every one of us. There are times in this life when things happen to us that are horrendous. There are times when people suddenly get diagnosed with serious diseases such as cancer and get horrible news. There are times when people whom we love die suddenly, like that young boy Andy Winkler this week who got killed in the Jeep crash. Uh, there are times when you've been working for a company for almost 40 years only to be told we don't need you anymore and you lose everything that you had with that company. People fall apart during those times and rightfully so. But when they come in to talk, I ask them to do a little spiritual exercise that I will commend to you to do at some point in time. I ask them to go back as far as they can in their memories to the first time that they remember Jesus rescuing them. You know, one of those times that you had years ago when you cried out to the Lord and somehow He got you through. And then I asked them to move forward chronologically. What was the next time that that happened? And the next time that it happened? And to make notes and write about those experiences. Because when we find ourselves today up against that proverbial brick wall, we need to go back and remember that the Lord was there for me in the past. He didn't abandon me. Yeah, at times He seems like He's asleep far, far away but he always came to my rescue. When I was working in the inner city of Baltimore at St. Bernardine Catholic Church, there was a song that the choir sang, the words of which I will never forget, and I commend them to you. The words are, I can't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Those are words of faith. They remind us that God was there for us at the beginning of our existence. And the Lord promised to be with us, even until the end of time. You, I, we are never alone. Even during those most difficult of storms in our lives. So let us pray today that we may never have the lapse in memory that the disciples had over and over again. May we recall gracefully how the Lord has always been there for us. And may we know that he who has been there for us in the past will be with us today and he will be there to see us into tomorrow.